We've solved many of the mysteries of the ancient past. However, sometimes the evidence to explain the existence of an ancient structure simply doesn't exist. Remote locations away from civilization are similarly perplexing. This is Sigiriya Rock, a mountain rising above a dense forest in central Sri Lanka. Or why people constructed certain buildings in the first place. How a so-called primitive society with limited technology managed to construct something that would challenge even modern methods can leave experts scratching their heads. Want to see some? 15 Most Mysterious Ancient Structures in the World Number 15. Stonehenge Some of these ancient stones weigh up to 30 tons, which would have been an epic struggle to move with primitive tools. The Stonehenge region covers 6,500 acres. It's an area seven and a half times as big as Central Park in New York City. Research shows that the site has continuously evolved over a period of about 10,000 years. The structure that we call Stonehenge was built roughly between 5,000 and 4,000 years ago and was once part of a larger sacred landscape. Recent experiments show that it's possible for a one-ton stone to be moved by a dozen people on a wooden trackway. But whether this technique was actually used by the ancient builders is a mystery. Scientists have also suggested that during the last ice age, glaciers carried these massive stones closer to the area. While other experts have said that water transport by raft is another idea of how these Stonehenge rocks came into place, so the jury is out as to how exactly this sacred place was built. The mystery surrounding Stonehenge has led to many theories. Some theories suggest Stonehenge was an elite burial ground. Others say it's a really big calendar. Of course, conspiracy theories connecting aliens to Stonehenge are quite common too. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. When you hear that nobody knows who built these structures in this top secret image that looks as though it was taken from a drone, it only makes it more mysterious. You can't help but notice that a huge robot is being dug up from underground, which makes us wonder, why was it buried in the first place? And where are the piles of dirt? On the other hand, maybe they're not digging this jumbo bot up out of the ground but actually burying it. Which only makes us ask, why would these folks on site need to bury this so-called ancient structure? It doesn't look that old to us. It is a robot after all. How old could it be? Unless it's one of those rumored ancient robots that you hear alien conspiracy theorists talking about, we can't tell if this is a secret they're trying to hide or a discovery they can't wait to show off. What do you think? Leave a comment with the hashtag open discussion. It would be pretty hard to keep something like this a secret anyhow. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Sagiria. It's a magical place just off the southeastern coast of India. A massive 660-foot column of rock jutting out from the green tropical forest in Sri Lanka. Welcome to the Sagiria Rock Fortress. Sagiria literally means lion rock, and you can see why. When you get there, a lion carved from rock awaits you. The fortress's name is echoed in the staircases that emerge from a lion's mouth constructed in brick and plaster which offer access to the site. It was both a palace and a fortress, surrounded by an extensive network of gorgeously groomed gardens and water reservoirs. The rock complex stands as one of the earliest preserved examples of ancient city planning. It holds a special place in Sri Lanka's cultural history. The Sinhalese people combined forward-thinking concepts to blend the man-made geometrical structures and natural forms of the surroundings. The Sigiriya site contains the ruins of an upper palace located on the flat top of the rock, a mid-level terrace that includes the Lion Gate and the mirror wall with its frescoes. One of the eight World Heritage Sites of Sri Lanka, Sigiriya is renowned for its 5th century frescoes. Preserving ancient Sinhalese culture, it's also been declared by UNESCO as the eighth wonder of the world. Number 13. Puma Punku. It's situated high upon a desert plateau of the Andes Mountains at an altitude of more than 12,000 feet. The name means Door of the Puma, and as far as archaeologists know, Puma Punku was once a thriving ancient town. This is all that remains of a holy site in the jungles of Bolivia. Yet, in this isolated part of the world stands all these amazing smooth stone structures featuring precision-made cuts, clean right angles, and expertly fitted joints. Today, rumors continue to grow that Puma Punku's massively heavy stone block structures were cut so precisely 
that highly advanced, so-called ancient technology seems to be the only logical explanation for their craftsmanship. The megaliths are among the largest on Earth, with some weighing several tons, and as you can see, many of the structures are still standing centuries after their inhabitants disappeared, scattered and broken around the area, leaving researchers to wonder what possibly could have tossed around in possibly heavy buildings. It's significant in Inca traditions, the place where it was once believed the world was created. And then one day, suddenly, the inhabitants vanished and a great civilization came toppling down. Number 12. Long Yu Caves So far, no trace of China's Long Yu Caves construction or even their existence has been located in the historic record. There's not a single historic document that refers to these grottoes, which is highly unusual considering the sheer scale of the project creating them. Its extensive, magnificent, and rare ancient underground world is considered in China the ninth wonder of the ancient world. Carved into solid siltstone, each grotto descends around 100 feet underground and contains finely carved stone rooms, bridges, gutters, and sacred pools. Their origin is a complete and utter mystery. In 1992, a curious local pooled his money with his neighbors to buy a water pump and began siphoning out the pond in the village. He completely drained one and found that it wasn't really a pond at all, but the flooded entrance to an ancient man-made cave. 36 grottos have since been discovered. Who built them? A project of this scale being commissioned by an emperor would have historical records of its construction. The quantity of rock that would have had to be removed is estimated to be nearly 35 million cubic feet. Taking into account the average digging rate per day per person, scientists have calculated that it would have taken a thousand people working day and night for six years to complete. Number 11. Yonaguni Monument These ancient ruins cover an area spanning almost a thousand feet by about 500 feet. It's an epic underwater series of precise geometric terraces with broad, flat, horizontal surfaces and sheer vertical stone risers, and it's known as the Yonaguni Monument but it's more famously known as the Japanese Atlantis. Yonaguni is composed of sandstone and mudstone that dates back 20 million years. These submerged stone structures lying just below the waters off an island in Japan are actually the ruins of an ancient city sunk by an earthquake about 2,000 years ago. They're the ruins of a castle, a triumphal arch, five temples, and at least one large stadium, all of which are connected by stone roads and channels. Experts were convinced that the site was carved thousands of years ago when the landmass was above water. If the monument was carved by human hands, it was during the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago, when Yonaguni was part of a land bridge that connected Japan to Taiwan. It lies in an earthquake-prone region, so that's likely how these ancient structures ended up in the sea. It's clearly a diver's paradise. In fact, the monument was first discovered in 1986 by a diver searching for a good spot to observe sharks, and he found this. Number 10. Michigan Stonehenge At a depth of about 40 feet in Lake Michigan's Grand Traverse Bay, archaeologists discovered sunken boats and cars and even a Civil War-era pier using sonar. But among all these great discoveries, they found a prehistoric surprise. While scanning underground the waters of Lake Michigan for shipwrecks, Archaeologists found a series of stones arranged in a Stonehenge-like manner. But that's not all. A boulder with a prehistoric carving of a mastodon, too. Those markings forming the petroglyph stood out the most. A petroglyph is an image created by removing part of a rock surface by scratching, picking, or carving. Ancient rock art. More or less, as for mastodon, it's an elephant-like animal that went extinct about 10,000 years ago. If found to be connected, this petroglyph in Michigan Stonehenge could be as much as 10,000 years old, coinciding with the post-Ice Age presence of both humans and mastodons at the same time. That's big news! So is there a North American version of Stonehenge in Lake Michigan? Yeah, underwater archaeology, prehistoric remains, and lost shipwrecks collide to form a Midwestern mystery. Number 9. Kiaktio Pagoda The Republic of the Union of Myanmar formerly known as Burma, is a country in Southeast Asia, and apparently gravity doesn't even work here. The Kiat Kio Pagoda, aka the Golden Rock of Myanmar, stands 24 feet tall in total. And as you can see, the boulder rests on the edge of a cliff with more than half of its surface leaning out over open air. The balancing rock seems to defy gravity, 
as it perpetually appears to be on the verge of rolling down the hill. Resting at the mountain top, it's one of the most sacred religious sites in the world. It's said that this place has been a Buddhist place of worship for 2,600 years. The boulder, which gleams golden and on which the small pagoda has been built, is about 25 feet in height and has a circumference of 50 feet. The pagoda above the rock is about 24 feet in height. The boulder sits on a natural rock platform that appears to have been naturally formed to act as the base to build the pagoda. The area of contact is extremely small. Plus, there's a sheer vertical drop in the rock face into the valley below. A staircase leads to the pagoda complex that houses several viewing platforms, pagodas, and Buddha shrines. However, the golden rock is the main attraction. Number 8. Cockno Stone Hidden within a scrap of woodland on the edge of a Scottish housing estate is one of Europe's most important artworks. Buried for years, this slab of rock etched with Stone Age carvings is perhaps one of the UK's most famous prehistoric sites. In nearly 50 years since it was buried, the 5,000-year-old Cogno stone was re-excavated. Researchers use cutting-edge 3D imaging technology to allow them to study it in more detail. The stone is covered in grooved spirals and indentations known as cup and rings. They consist of a round indentation surrounded by a series of concentric circles that look like ripples on water. Some of the carvings have been found on boulders and outcrops overlooking major routes, hunting grounds, or water holes, which have led to suggestions that they're perhaps used to mark these spots. Later examples have been found in association with burial or ceremonial sites. Some experts believe they've been an ancient form of writing or recording events or perhaps a unit of measure. Others have suggested they may be artworks that symbolize life and death. Discovered in 1887, on a section of farmland, the Cogno Stone caused a sensation when it was unearthed. In 1965, an archaeologist decided to bury it under several feet of soil to protect it from further damage. Number 7. Olmec Colossal Heads The largest of these colossal heads stands about 10 feet tall and weighs an estimated 40 tons. Obviously, the creation of these heads was a significant undertaking. The boulders and blocks used to carve the heads were located as much as 50 miles away from where they stand now. 17 Olmec Colossal Heads have been found. Some traces of plaster and pigments on one of the heads indicate that they may have once been painted. The Olmec civilization, which thrived along Mexico's Gulf Coast from about 1200 to 400 BC, was the first major Mesoamerican culture. They were extremely talented artists, and their most lasting artistic contribution is without a doubt the enormous sculpted heads they created. And they still exist today for the world to enjoy. Archaeologists suggest the creators used a laborious process of slowly moving the stones, a combination of raw manpower and rafts on rivers. Once the stones reached the destination, they were carved using only crude tools such as stone hammers. They didn't have metal tools, which makes the sculptures all the more remarkable. Originally thought to depict gods, most archaeologists now say they believe they're likenesses of long-dead rulers during this ancient civilization's reign. Number 6. Sewate Stone This map, called the Sewate Stone, is on the upper surface of what appears to be the bottom half of a huge boulder. And while the creators of this relic remain a mystery, the monolith provides archaeologists with insight into the culture of a pre-Columbian population. The site is regarded as a center of religious worship for the Inca people in Peru. And the main attraction is this big granite block ornamented with complex and mysterious figures resembling a three-dimensional map of an ancient city, dating to the period of the Inca Empire, which flourished between the 15th and 16th centuries. Compared to other Incan sites, little has been left from the time of the Incas here. While the precise meaning of this stone remains unsolved, the monolith helps archaeologists piece together how and why they live this way. The rock is carved with more than 200 figures of geometric and zoomorphic shapes, mostly felines, frogs, and snakes, and the map is complete with terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. And that's why archaeologists have determined that this site was for rituals and ceremonies. Located on the top of a terraced hill, the site was once home to a sanctuary. All that remains of this sanctuary today is this monolith. Number 5. Largest Man-Made Block Check out the largest known stone block ever carved by human hands. During the period of Roman rule, this place was known as the City of the Sun, 
and housed one of the largest and grandest sanctuaries in the empire. The gigantic blocks were used in the foundations of the temples. However, this limestone quarry houses two massive building blocks that never made it to the temple. One weighing about 1,240 tons and the other weighs about 1,000 tons. There's a bigger block. It measures 64 feet by 19.6 feet by 18 feet and weighs an estimated 1,650 tons. Tests conducted by archaeologists at this ancient stone quarry in Lebanon revealed the size and weight of the enormous monolith. The newly uncovered stone block was likely cut to be used in the temple but was probably abandoned. How they were cut so finely and moved into place has defied explanation, particularly considering the blocks are now known to have weighed over 1,000 tons. This stone and others never made it out of the quarry probably because they were just too massive to transport. Even though the block was likely a major disappointment to its creators, they unwittingly set world records. The new discovered block is the biggest boulder known from antiquity. Number 4. Quen Shi Wang Tomb Quen Shi Huang was the founder of the Qing Dynasty and the first emperor of a unified China. Rather than maintain the title of king, he ruled as the first emperor from 221 to 210 BCE. His self-invented title emperor would continue to be born by Chinese rulers for the next two millennia. So he was kind of a big deal. This newly discovered terracotta army is part of a much larger necropolis, constructed as a smaller version of the emperor's imperial palace after his death and covers a large area around the emperor's royal tomb. Incredibly, they were discovered in 1974 by local farmers. But why would a terracotta army even exist? The figures were apparently created to serve the deceased Chinese emperor in the afterlife. They sat untouched underground for more than 2200 years. The details of the warriors are so intricate and individualized that experts believe that they were based on real soldiers who served in the emperor's army. The three pits they discovered contained an estimated 8,000 life-size figures. On top of that, thousands of bronze items of weaponry had been recovered, including swords, daggers, spears, lances, battle axes, shields, and crossbows. Number 3. Nan Madal about 1,800 miles north of eastern Australia, the original name was Reef of Heaven. This ruined city is one of today's great archaeological enigmas and is sometimes called Atlantis, the eighth wonder of the world, or the Venice of the Pacific. Today, Nan Madal is an archaeological site in the federated state of Micronesia in the western Pacific Ocean. The complex is constructed in the shallow water next to the eastern shore of Pompeii Island. The centerpiece of the whole complex is the royal mortuary, with its massive high walls surrounding the central tomb enclosure. Evidence of the earliest human activity dates back to the 1st or 2nd century BC and the remains of their megalithic architecture still stand today. The 100-odd stone structures were built atop coral reefs. In total, the rocks that make up the site weigh nearly 827,000 tons. Little is known about how its builders were able to move such massive amounts of stone without levers, pulleys, or metal. Archaeologists believe that portions of the city have been there for more than a thousand years and that the site once served as the ceremonial political and residential hub for the indigenous people here. Number 2. Las Bolas While clearing the jungle for plantations in 1940 in Costa Rica, employees of a fruit company uncovered numerous large stone spheres partly buried in the forest floor. Since their discovery, the true purpose of the spheres, which still elude experts, has been the subject of speculation ranging from theories about the balls being navigational aids to relics related to Stonehenge or the product of an unknown ancient civilization, even alien contact. Around 300 spheres are known to exist, with the largest weighing 16 tons and measuring 8 feet in diameter, and the smallest being no bigger than a basketball. So how did Las Bolas come to be? Part of the mystery surrounds the way in which they were created as near-perfect spears. They were created in a time in which metal tools had apparently not been invented yet as it's estimated that the stones were made around 600 AD. Locals quickly began speculating and many myths developed to explain the stone spheres. For example, they were thought to be brought to earth by aliens. Others think they're linked to the lost continent of Atlantis. Archaeologists believe that the stones were most likely handmade. They think this was done by ancient people indigenous to the region. Number 1. Gobekli Tepe This is one of the most important archaeological sites in the world. 
Located in modern Turkey, the discovery of this 10,000-year-old site sent shockwaves through the archaeological world and beyond. Some researchers even claim it was the site of the actual Garden of Eden from the Bible. The place is called Gobekli Tepe, or Potbelly Hill in Turkish, and it was only discovered after a farmer discovered something strange under the soil. Six miles from Urfa, an ancient city in southeastern Turkey, these megaliths predate UK's Stonehenge by some 6,000 years. It predates pottery, the invention of writing, the wheel, and the beginning of agriculture. These sculptures and the megalithic architecture make up what's perhaps the world's earliest temple. Before it was discovered, most people saw some broken slabs of limestone and assumed the mound was nothing more than an abandoned medieval cemetery. Gobekli Tepe has a gently rounded top that rises 50 feet above the surrounding landscape. And to experts, the unique shape stood out. It was a gigantic Stone Age site. The site was first used at the dawn of the Neolithic period, which is Southwest Asia, marks the appearance of the oldest permanent human settlements anywhere in the world. These ancient structures really do show us how far we've come. But at the same time, they reveal the limitlessness of our imaginations even when we didn't have the tools or the technology to make our dreams a reality. Somehow, we found a way.